Good morning, everyone. How are you? Uh, today is day 11 of Lent. Uh, I didn't do devotions last night with everybody. I was uh, not feeling well, um, and I just kind of lounged around and didn't do much. Uh, but I will probably be doing those devotions tonight. Uh, yesterday I, I fasted like I was doing a regular Lent day. Um, it was Sunday yesterday. Today's Monday, the 6th of March. And, uh, yeah, so I, I treated yesterday like a regular fast day because Friday was my, uh, my Sunday. I cheated on it because I had, uh, people at work, uh, who were celebrating my leaving. <laughs> Tells you how much they love me, you know, they celebrate me when I'm leaving. Uh, no, they're really cool people and I will miss them, but, uh, so it was a good day. But anyway, today is day 11. Today's devotion is called The Terror of the Lord. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 10, 28. We have but to read the scriptures with our eyes open, and we can see this truth running like a strong cable from Genesis to Revelation. The presence of the divine always brought fear to the hearts of sinful men. Always there was about any manif manifestation of God something that dismayed the onlookers, that daunted and overawed them, that struck them with a terror more than natural. This terror had no relation to mere fear of bodily harm. It was a dread consternation experienced far in toward the center and core of the nature, much farther in than that fear experienced as a normal result of the instinct for physical self-preservation. I do not believe that any lasting good can come from religious activities that do not root in this quality of creature fear. The animal in us is very strong and altogether self-confident. Until it has been defeated, God will not show himself to the eyes of our faith, until we have been gripped by that nameless terror which results when an unholy creature is suddenly confronted by that one who is the holiest of all. We are not likely to be much affected by the doctrine of love and grace as it is declared by the New Testament Evangel. The love of God affects a carnal heart, not at all, or, if at all, then adversely, for the knowledge that God loves us may simply confirm us in our self-righteousness. The effort of liberal and borderline modernists to woo men to God by presenting the soft side of religion is an unqualified evil because it ignores the very reason for our alienation from God in the first place. Until a man has gotten into trouble with his heart, he is not likely to get out of trouble with God. Cain and Abel are two solemn examples of this truth. Cain brought a present to one whom he assumed to be pleased with him. Abel brought a sacrifice to one whom he knew could not accept him as he was. His trembling heart told him to find a place to hide. Cain's heart did not tremble. Cain was well satisfied with himself, so he sought no hiding place. The fear of God would have served Cain well in that critical moment, for it would have changed the whole character of his offering and altered the, the entire course of his life for the better. As indispensable as is the terror of the Lord, we must always keep in mind that it cannot be induced by threats made in the name of the Lord. Hell and judgment are realities, and they must be preached in their biblical context as fully as the Bible teaches them, no more and no less, but they cannot induce that mysterious thing we call the fear of the Lord. Such fear is a supernatural thing, having no relation to threats of punishment. It has about it a mysterious quality, often without much intellectual content. It is a feeling rather than an idea. It is a deep reaction of a fallen creature in the presence of the holy being. The stunned heart knows is God. The Holy Spirit alone can induce this emotion in the human breast. All effort on our part to superinduce it, induce it is wasted or worse. 
It is true God loves us. Absolutely, 100%. And he loves us as we are. But he can't accept us as we are. Because he cannot have sin in his presence. And it is important when we are teaching Jesus or preaching Jesus that we tell others about that. Because I don't think people know that anymore. Now, this was written... A.W. Tozer was a mid-20th century uh, writer, uh, 50s, I think, 40s, 50s, and it's still true. So, uh, we need to pray. Let's pray today and pray that our uh, evangelizing, our telling others about Christ, will be rooted in the truth of God, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So let's pray. Lord, we praise you, Father. We thank you for your love, but we also thank you uh, for that holy fear that drove us into your arms, Father. We thank you for that holy fear, uh, that holy wrath that was exercised on Christ on the cross. We thank you that his punishment served to protect us, Father God. But until we come to that cross and until we say, I accept that cross, and until we ask for forgiveness in due or in light of the blood of that cross, Father, that wrath remains on us. We pray, Lord, that you would bless us in that, Father. Help us to teach others and to preach to others and to tell others and to lead others to that cross not right to heaven because that's not our job our job is to bring others to the cross of christ and then they will experience the love of christ after that and we just praise you father god for those steps i know i took those steps and i was scared and my sin My sin overwhelmed me, and it, it numbed me a lot. But and then when I was in your presence, I felt so ashamed of my sin. Lord, I pray that you would just instill that shame in the sinner, that they would know that they're wrong, and that they stand in the presence of a holy God when they come to you, and that that sin shouldn't shine bright. It shouldn't look good. It should look bad. And we do pray, Father, that you would help us uh, not to shame others, but to at least announce them, uh, announce to them that you want them white as snow. And we can't be white as snow on our own. We know that. We can't earn that. All we can do is ask for forgiveness, and your grace will uh, cover us. So thank you for that, Lord, and we pray that you would just bless our day. Uh, those of us who are fasting today, and uh, praise you for that, Lord. Some people are fasting all day. Some people are fasting for the full 40 Give them strength, Father God. Those of us who are fasting in the daylight hours, give us strength, Father. For those of us who are fasting from other things uh, as well or in, in, in lieu of, Father, bless them as well. And those who aren't fasting at all, Father, bless them too, Lord. Just pray that you would just bless us uh, in your name and in the holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Have a good day at work, at play, at school, at wherever you're going, if you're cleaning the house or if you're... Uh, playing with the kids at a playground or, or whatever it is, have fun. Um, and remember that God loves you and we should be in awe of him.